Uh, hey guys, welcome back. This is Atul from Team K Training Academy, and in this fourth part of fourth day of a 12 days video series on AWS for absolute beginners, going from a complete beginner, learning things like cloud concepts to identity and access management, all the way till preparing for certification and a resume, as well as interview and job preparation. Uh, today we are going to talk everything about compute, which is nothing but your EC2s, Lambdas, Elastic Beanstalk, and EKS as well, and few other services as well. So compute is nothing but something that gives you a uh, a memory and CPU. That basically um, majority of your work is going to be done on compute, which is your memory and CPU. And there are different services depending on the requirement that you go. Now compute, not every compute comes under infrastructure service. Virtual machine EC2 comes under infrastructure service, but things like Lambda and EKS comes under platform as a service. We'll see that as we move forward here. Now, the best ways to explain all these things are actually doing it on the dashboard. So this is AWS dashboard. And here, if you scroll down and click on select on this, here you have compute. This is all, all these are my compute services. Uh, within also, there's another service com containers. Typically, these are also uh, provide me all the memory and CPU. So I still put them under uh, com uh, compute as well only, but we'll talk about containers as well in a minute here. So compute. Now, majority of chunk um, or most of the time you'll be working when we say compute is EC2, which is an elastic compute cloud, which is nothing but your virtual machines. So you will be creating some virtual machines to do a particular task. Now I'm on this machine console here and I can come and create my EC2s by coming here. Now it will be always worth doing and creating an environment of EC2. Uh, so what, how you can do is you can come here and click on launch instance and create machines um, on. Now today I'm not going to create, if time permits, I'm going to show it to you because we have a 15 minute window limit. Uh, but I'll just quickly go and select your name here. And this is where you go and select what are the, what operating system you want. You want a Linux, you want a Windows, you want a Mac. Within Linux, you want a Red Hat flavor or you want a Ubuntu, you want a Amazon Linux or SUSE or something else as well. Now, this is where you'll be selecting shape, how much CPU and memory you want to give. Under free trial, always try T2 Micro. This is where you'll be creating a key pair. And um, when you're creating, uh, use if you're coming from a Windows, use PAM file. Um, if you're doing Linux, use, or if you're connecting from a, a Mac machine, then use maybe SSH, but you can always change these files. Now you need this key pair to connect later, uh, or maybe retrieve, if you're creating a Windows password, you'll be needing them for retrieving the Windows password. I'll create a separate setting later. Now this machine that we are creating needs an IP address, and that IP address it gets from a network with inside a subnet. And then we can define some firewalls, which we'll talk about uh, later. And this is where you create a underlying, in order for this machine to run an operating system, it needs some storage. And that is what that storage we are creating. And with that, you can create multiple machines uh, with, with this and you simply create a launch instance. So I'm not going to select it right now. If time permits will come and, but I think we have a lab later in the end on going to this URL where you go and create EC2 Windows instance. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's my uh, EC2, which I can then add um, more additional storage, which is block volumes, which we saw yesterday. EBS, and I can also use file volumes, EFS, file storage as well, EFS, e EFS and e FSX, depending on Windows and Linux type as well. Now, another one is Lambda, which is nothing but serverless implementation, where I only pay for what I use and I don't need to worry about underlying operating system. Uh, so take simple example, you might have heard of Alexa saying, hey Alexa, do this task or do the task. So behind the scene, you need that implementation and AWS is going to provide you all the necessary infrastructure and, and functions. Uh, so you can ask to do it the task. So you're not worried about underlying operating system, which is under Lambda. Again, if you want to go and need more, just click on this link um, and by the way, how you can get hold of this email. If you're watching this as a part of series, which I've already registered, good, you know how to link, how to get these links inside an email or you'll be receiving an email. If for some reason, if you're watching that on uh, independently this video, uh, where you want to get hold of this email series as well as these links, 
you simply go to this URL ketonacadby.com forward slash AWS 01 and click on and um, enter your name, email address and a phone number with the correct con uh, country code so that we can add you in the WhatsApp group and you can get all the notifications link day by day. Um, so that is where you go and read more about AWS Lambda as well. I can simply go again here and search for Lambda and you'll be able to create these core uh, uh, any dependent underlying um, uh, runtime you can do with whether it's .NET, Java, Python, etc. as well. So you create some functions. Again, there's a whole task about what kind of a runtime you want in underlying function. It is a Node.js, you need Java, you need Python, you need .NET, uh, you need Ruby, Ruby on Rails, and so on. These are some runtimes that are available. Or you can build your own runtime platform as well for these functions, which is Lambda, nothing but serverless Lambda. Then you have an Elastic Beanstalk. And then Elastic Beanstalk, uh, let me move myself here. So Elastic Beanstalk comes under, again, Platform as a Service, where you go and create a platform on which you can run your web app, where you don't need to worry about running operating system, you don't need to worry about uh, managing that operating system, you just need um, either, depending on what application you want to run, if you need .NET, Python, PHP, you just go and tell it, or even Docker as well. So to give you that context, you say Elastic Beanstalk, Beanstalk. Um, yeah, Elastic Beanstalk, this is to run and manage your web apps. Um, so I come here and then, so this again comes under platform as a service. So I'm saying I'm going to create an application uh, um, and then say name, environment, and then domain name will be the URL through which I'm going to access this, my web app. And then this is where I'm selecting platform, whether it's a PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Tomcat, Go, Docker, Java, .NET, Windows, .NET, Linux, and so on. Now the difference between this and serverless is serverless um, is it's a function uh, you're simply creating. This gives a typical normal application server on which you are running, but without have to manage the, op uh, the operating system. Let me repeat one more time. In a virtual machine, you have to manage the virtual machine and then deploy the application runtime like any of these PHP, Python, Java. And then on top of that, you run your application. Here, you don't need to worry about operating system. You don't even have to worry about Node.js or something. It'll You'll get it by default. That comes That's come, called as platform as a service, PS, which we covered on day one, where we were looking this service type, different service type, which is SAS, PaaS, IaaS. So Beanstalk and Lambda and EKS all comes under my platform as a service. So that's another service, Beanstalk. Then I have a Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration tool. Now this is, I'm coming here, if I go under these services, and I said earlier, this is my compute, all the different type of compute, my um, EC2 batch, um, Beanstalk, Lambda, LightSail, Outpost. But then I also have a containers, which again comes under still um, like typically I understand take it as a com compute which is because underlying you still have a CPU and memory for this and in that you have container service which is my container orchestration from AWS's proprietary container orchestration tool. I have elastic Kubernetes service which is a managed Kubernetes implementation on AWS. Then I also have a OpenShift which is from IBM, Red Hat IBM. That's now being implementation of that Red Hat OpenShift uh, which is nothing but a Kubernetes implementation on Red Hat, which is acquired by IBM, That that's implementation on AWS is my Red Hat OpenShift as well. And then container registries to store all my images through which my containers run. And now I know it's a lot, but any point, anything is not clear, just let us know. So I can give you in the comment section and I can add more documentation. The best would be you click on this and you will get more information, plenty of information on everything about EKS, if you don't know. I've created some videos, blogs, and step by step videos to go deeper into Elastic Community Service. Definitely worth looking and going deeper into how does that whole EKS works, uh, how, what are the components, how does the workflow look like, how do you create a EKS cluster using graphical user interface console, as well as CLI, and then other benefits of this EKS as well. Um, so I think that's, um, for now, let's go and see the task for today, which is creating a EC2 instance. Now, we can create either a Windows type EC2 or a Linux type EC2 or even Mac type EC2. 
in this example we are creating a uh, windows type i've already mentioned to you uh, some of the steps which i've covered here uh, but main important you're going to struggle is while retrieving the password so if you collect the windows you are creating the memory but this is where you need to imp important thing is you need to key pair when you're creating the key pair you would be using private key format which is dot pm file uh, that is what you'll be using dot pm file uh, and you'll be using at the time of retrieving the password so once you've created and launched the instance then you're going to this is where I've connected you you say connect and this will be where you're connecting the you're using remote desktop client by default that comes in windows for mac you can download a tool called a remote desktop client or app and through which you'll be connecting but you need to retrieve the password and for that you'll click on this get password and that is where you will be entering the pm file that you created earlier which is a private key through which when you say decrypt password you'll get a password save that copy that password and then enter uh, on your rdp client this is the password you get something like this um, don't copy paste that will not work we have deleted this in machine and then you create this uh, machine and connect to this machine as well now one mistake people do is either this desktop name doesn't matches with what they are doing maybe just remove and say more choices and change it to administrator here and then the password that you have connected above and you'll be straight away log into the windows you can something similar create on a linux machine as well so let me show it to you very quickly create and connect to a windows mach or linux machine if time permits again i want to limit it to under three minutes oh, sorry under 15 minutes so i'm coming here and saying um, launch an instance you can do it in a different manners so i click on launch an instance here so I've come to this uh, here, I've said launch an instance, I've given name of this machine, I've selected an operating system of Amazon Linux, you can select any other operating system of Linux type as well. I'm just showing you how to create a Linux machine. This is where I've selected a image name, which is 2023 version of Linux. I'm saying 64 bit of operating system. And this is where I'm selecting my CPU and memory, which is one vCPU and one gig memory. So the shape dictates how much CPU and memory I get in this case, T2 micro. I've already created a key pair of private key, public key, which I'm going to use to connect later. Here I'm saying on which network my machine IP address will be given by this VPC and subnet. And there I'm saying firewall, I'm saying allow as such because it's a Linux machine, port number 22, allow from anywhere. And then I'm saying on this machine, I want eight gig of disk storage. And that's pretty much number of copies of this machine is only one. And I simply say, and click on create a machine here and say launch instance and once it's launched it will take few minutes and then i'll show you to connect once it's ready here i'll pause this video for a minute so i just waited around five minutes and i'm back onto the screen now so once you've successfully say launched click on this instance here and then under running instance you will see it's running click on this instance that will tell you the public ip and you can simply click on connect button here. You click on connect. Now there are different ways to connect. You can connect using SSH tools or putty or other manner, ma method. I'll use the browser itself to connect. So I'll say EC2 instance and connect EC2 instance here. Because it's a li Amazon Linux, I'm using EC2 dash user by default. Click on connect and it will open a new tab and you will be able to access from here itself. You don't need a private key because you've already submitted that private key on and it will now connect um, on this in a minute here. So now I'm on connect and then I can go and sudo su minus and then I'm on a public IP on a root and this is my public IP which is 54 uh, this IP. One more thing after once you're done make sure don't forget to shut down the machine and terminate stop will shut down the machine but it will still retain the disk and image but you completely remove it you simply say terminate otherwise it will eat up your free machines or free tier as well and simply say click on terminate uh, so that basically completes our compute i'm conscious of the time to keep it under 15 minutes or so just a few more minutes left so make sure that you complete the lab inform me once it's done any problem any doubt you need or any help you need and tomorrow we are going to cover one of the most important topic in my view networking which will go a little bit deeper into these networkings with that atul from team keton academy let me know how do you feel uh, did, are you enjoying any feedback any suggestions and share it with the friends and colleagues as well 
Take care and bye for now.